Very good. Now we move on to... Central City. Central City. So, the Central City uh, is what chapter? chapter 13. Section 32, and the comments begin. Uh, the first place, and probably the most useful place to start, would be on uh, page 4 of Attachment 2. At recommendation Roman numeral 15. If I just uh, start there because that's, this is probably one of the uh, more major changes to the Central City chapter. So this is the great big one, page four, Minister's um, comments, Central City integration. Yes. Minister's recommendation 95, delete from draft proposal, general provisions that already include in other proposals and replace deleted provisions. Is that the one? Yes. Yeah. So, the, um, in a nutshell, what the ministers have recommended is that the Central City chapter not be a standalone chapter, that it be integrated with the rest of the proposed replacement district plan, um, and at the same time, and I might as well mention it now because it's all overlaps, uh, they, they sought uh, that the objectives and policies be more specific and um, more aligned with the strategic directions decision. What has been, what is proposed in response to those comments is that the Central City Chapter ultimately is fully integrated into the Replacement District Plan. And that is proposed to be achieved uh, through a number of steps. First of all, at this point in time in terms of Stage 3, the notification of Stage 3, uh, including provisions in those other Stage 3 chapters that are being notified now that relate to the Central City in those Stage 3 chapters. So the Stage 3 chapters I'm talking about in particular are the um, natural and cultural heritage chapters and the uh, uh, specific purpose flatland recovery zone. Those provisions will be notified now. So the intention is that, in fact what has been done now, is that the provisions relating to those matters that are within the central city uh, are included within those main topic chapters now. We've also taken what were the general central city objectives which are objectives that covered not just a particular zone within the central city, but the central city uh, in a wider perspective, and uh, have proposed to include some of those directly into the strategic directions chapter, as additions to the strategic directions chapter. Uh, and the uh, one remaining one uh, to be incorporated into the commercial uh, zone chapter, or the commercial chapter. And uh, finally, what we've indicated in what is left of the central city chapter is an indication of where those provisions will go in the main topic chapters. So it indicates that uh, the central city um, residential zone, for example, will be located in the residential chapter and so forth. Shall we just point you to an example of that, for instance, just in this big chapter here? If you turn to um, page 200 in it, or 199, um, just above the heading Earthworks, there's a box, an advice note, that says where this part of this chapter will actually sit once, de once decisions have been made. That's just an example of what Peter's talking about, page 199 in the, dr in the draft chapter. 
be there's a box with an advice note in it. That's what Peter's been saying. That will indicate where the where the actual rules will sit once the decisions have been made, so that there isn't a standalone chapter any longer. And uh, the, the last aspect of that is that uh, it's proposed that the staff come back to the council with a recommendation that the council itself lodge a submission seeking the integration of all those central city provisions into uh, the remainder of the replacement district plan. So uh, on page four of uh, attachment two to the council report, you can see there in the uh, officer recommended revision of wording, uh, first of all, the indication that natural and cultural heritage provisions and uh, flatland recovery zone provisions are integrated into those chapters now. The second point is uh, the amendments to the uh, specific, sorry, strategic directions objective 3.3.8, revitalising the central city. And then uh, item three, uh, the advice notes that will be and examples of advice notes that will be included in the publicly notified version of what remains of the Central City Chapter. Any questions, comments? Okay, just moving on then, the next point um, on page 10 of the report which is the Central City Business and Mixed Use Zones. The Ministers sought uh, an amendment to the policies to provide a basis for the height controls in the Central City to um, achieve a low-rise building environment. So uh, additions have been proposed to the existing policies uh, on an Appendix 2 on uh, page... 88 and 89. So it just adds within um, those pol that objective and policy that uh, one of the outcomes sought is to set height limits within the central city. And just to just to make sure we're all on the same page, what Peter is doing now is is going through the comments on the central city chapter that are in the covering report, which highlights the substantial comments that have been made by the minister. So he's just done the first and the second, and now he's going to move on to, or oh, transport zone. There aren't any. What 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 page is the uh, so uh, in the, the report page eleven? Yeah, no, no, but in in this big report, uh, you're on page ninety five. The, no, no the, uh, it's page 88. So, 88. Uh, it's recommendation 88 and 89 on pages 60 and 61. Sorry, I got my numbers wrong. 60 and 61. Sorry. I got distracted again. 60 and 61. So starting at recommendation 88, which is a change to objective 13.1.3. Sorry, recommendation 88. No, that's not right. 88 is on... That is on page 68. Yeah. It's on page 68? That's right. So yes, um, page 68... Recommendation 88 yeah, on, page on page 68. <laughs> Recommendation 88. So the first is the change to objective 13.1.3, and then the second is the change to policy 13.2.1.1.3, and really just indicating that there will be height limits. There's the central city, that means in, inside the frame now. It means inside the four avenues or five avenues, actually. Because hmm. there are height limits in a number of different zones. But I thought that the whole purpose of the frame was to not have a distribution of commercial activities across the central city. Isn't that 
the opposite of what the Central City Recovery Plan intends? It, uh, the or is it just one of those little ironies when you try to merge a, a, a plan that's been devised outside our planning process with our own plan? Yes, it's distribution perhaps was not... Well, I just wondered if that's the right word, because... The best word. What... Um, I think that sorry, what the Minister's asking for is, is, is actually contrary, potentially, mm. to mm. the Central City Recovery Plan's purpose. Yes, what, what the Minister, I think, was wanting is an indication that they want the commercial activity to be spread at a low scale through the Central City, rather than to be concentrated in a small number of tall buildings. That's, that's what they want to say. Well, what they want in the land values that now dominate the central, central city <laughs> are two different things. I, you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't know that... I can't see that what they're asking for. Just, just run me through well, the... the the situation at the moment is that we do have, um, we have proposed height limits within the central city to reflect those height limits that are in, that have come through in the operative plan from the Christchurch Central Recovery Plan. So what is missing is a policy basis for having those height limits, and that in fact was missing from the um, recovery plan itself. So what all we're doing is introducing as a policy that there will be height limits set to achieve this low and more spread out distribution of commercial activities rather than concentrated in a few tall buildings. I think we had this in our original Central City Plan. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not we objecting to the philosophy. To... I'm just yeah. wondering mm. whether they've actually cooked their own goose. But anyway, that's... At, at the end of the day, we have to be consistent with the Christchurch Central Recovery Plan. That does have height limits in it, um, and this is really just providing the policy basis for those height limits. Oh, I see. This is just to allow the height limits that are mm. covered by the Central yes. City Recovery yes. Plan. Okay, right, yeah. right, right, right. Exactly. Jamie and Jimmy will remember, but I thought we actually came up with that policy basis when we submitted our own plan, you know, in the discussion on the height limits. I think that yep. came out of a... Anyway. Yep. It came out of sheer an idea. It's what people wanted. So that's the end of the uh, commercial and mixed-use provisions. Um, and it's probably best if I hand over now to Jack to deal with the hospital zone. So what page is this on the big pages? So in the first report, so it's page 11. Is yeah, um, yeah, I know where it is. Oh, and there. then page 100. Okay. Of 100 of the big table. 100, thank you. Um, from recommendation 140. Um, so the report, um, Brigitte's outlined the most kind of substantive issues there really. Um, most of them were about making the rules a little less prescri prescriptive, um, a bit more clearer, um, and a few minor things like um, adding a few more permitted activities to what they could do within the hospital zone. So we things like um, staff overnight accommodation, so we've done those those minor ones, they're quite straightforward. Um, I suppose the three main things that they flagged to ask us for, um, which things that I've chosen not to run with, I wanted to flag with you to check if you're happy with that. Um, so the first one was about um, Lindhurst Hospital, which is a site on the corner of Montreal and Beeley. Um, I've proposed that that is no longer um, zoned as hospital. Now, there isn't another zone which fits it exactly. Um, the, the choices really had were going forward with a hospital zone, which you'll all be aware is the zone that we want to put on our larger, big, um, extensive sites, really, where we want to see intensification. And Lindhurst Hospital is very much not that. The DHB advised us they would probably flick it on in the future. 
um, at some point. Um, they wanted to refurbish it, but not to redevelop it as such. Mm. Um, so along the southern side of Beely Ave, you'll probably be aware that the, the central city um, recovery plan has um, it's zoned all of those residential. Now, there's actually a lot of motels and an awful lot of healthcare uses along there. So in line with that, so as not to be inconsistent, that's also what the proposed zoning has gone in as. So that's what went to the minister and his comment. They, they came back and said, no, we'd prefer it to stay as hospital zone. But I've kind of, you know. Did they say why? No, I mean, it'll be because the rules are more restrictive for what they can do in the residential zone as opposed to what they could do under the hospital zone. But the way we've gone with our hospital zone is that actually each site we've had to kind of almost do site-specific built form standards. So, and the way we've gone with it is making the heights go up a lot, but we've, we've gone for these wider setbacks so that they can intensify as long as they bring it in. And because of the small size of the site, mm. it's not that appropriate to take that approach on that one. So... Have you talked to the officials that were advising the ministers on this? We talked to the DHB. We did a lot of dialogue going along with this. Um, and as I said, no, their feedback was that they wanted um, something that in future would enable them to have other options. So, um, so what does enable them to have other options? Well, this is the problem. The other side of Beely, um, as part of the stage two, we've got this corridor zone. Which yeah, no, enables, I know. And but ideally, it doesn't apply on But the... it doesn't apply in the central city. So no. There isn't another one that, that gives them that kind of flexibility. But as I said, obviously, all the uses along the south southern side of Beeley are these kind of things. So it doesn't give them the permission to do that, obviously, but it's the same approach that has been taken for that south side of Beeley. So that means that if they wanted to be a health clinic like, you know, two doors down or wherever yeah. it is, you know, that there's lots of health facilities on the, on the south side... So they would have to apply for a resource consent. In the same way that the other healthcare facilities... At, 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 because some of them are, in fact, residential properties re-purposed re, um, to, to health facilities. That's right. Um, so it's been a tricky one. There's no ideal fit for it, really. No, I know, but... Mm. No, 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 it's a planning... It's just a planning tool. But, do, but doesn't the planning or the zoning have to reflect the actual use of the... No, no, no. Well, it's currently a hospital. Yeah, but not in the sense no, of... No, 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 I know. But, it, oh. yeah. <laughs> I, I, know, I know what you mean, yeah. but I think that... I think that... Um, I understand the issue, but I asked you whether yeah. you'd talk to the officials that were advising the minister, and I used that deliberately, because that isn't the DHB. No, oh, not the Ministry of Health. At the dialogue. Um, Are you sure it's the Ministry of Health, or do you think that Sarah's been advising the Minister on this one? Well, the comments all came through from the, the Crown as a whole, didn't they? That's correct. So it's a health... It was a health response? Well, the, the comments are... Um, collated by Sarah, but they come. Th these proposals go to all of the ministers and then they collate all the responses back in. I'm not clear whether that comment came from the Ministry of Health or some other minister. It might be worth just checking out because, I mean, uh, uh, this is one that you just wouldn't really want to have a big focus on and if it was just quietly left the way it was, it might be the best thing to do, you know, sensible approach. <laughs> um, okay. Um... I mean, the thing is, is that yeah. ultimately, I mean, what, can't you have it so that so that it, its underlying designation goes back after after it's um, you know if it's not no longer used for a facility? Yeah. Didn't we put that designation right. somewhere so else? All hospital sites have an underlying zone provision, right. so if they're not used for healthcare going forward, they'll be used for something else. Right. So that would automatically be central city residential zone would go under that one. Right. So does anyone object to that being the approach? So, mm. so, so you'd leave it as a hospital in the meantime, even though that it doesn't quite fit our new version of a hospital. It um, is a hospital. Yeah, I'd need to... Because of the, the way we've looked at this, we haven't looked at the, a new rules package for that site. So what... what, what um, so so that's, what if, that's an issue. So tell me exactly what you've called it on the plan now. That's a central city residential zone. 
Right, so, and, and it's got existing use rights as a hospital. Yeah. So the alternative would be to say, leave it as a hospital, but it, its underlying zone would be residential. That, that would be, although, yes, we, we'd have to come up with some with new... form standards for it because we've amended a lot of the other hospital standards because right. they're no longer appropriate. But that's yeah. the reason we're here today, is to decide yeah. whether, you, whether you would like us to, to do, do that. that. Yeah. Just, you know, I'm just saying that, just given a number of issues, mm -hmm. um, and the big picture and what we're wanting to focus on in terms of getting our district plan, and mm. what might sidetrack the um, hearings panel. Yeah, just to let you know, from a heads up on the, um, Missions that have come through on the stage two. The other side of Belia, Pegasus Health, you know, the 24 hour mm -hmm. clinic, they've come in asking for a hospital zoning because they're saying they use it for the same kind of things. And I'd be really hesitant about opening them up to a hospital zone as well, given the whole idea is it's just the larger sites, you know, that we're really going to intensify in the future. So I'm just wondering if, you know, if we do it for Lindhurst, what they'll think. You know about the other kind, but Lindhurst of already right have that designation. They do, so that's different. And yeah. when you think yeah. that Pegasus are likely to move from their current site, don't you think there might be another reason why they might be seeking that designation? Mm. Possibly. Yeah. Hmm. What are they right next door to? Well, yeah. It's the called hosp Southern Cross Hospital. Yeah, the hospital. Bingo. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen, but I'm just saying. Mm. Maybe it's a little bit better mm. to take an approach that says, what are we really focusing on here? What could sidetrack? Um, mm. And does it really <laughs> matter in the bigger scheme of things when the underlying zone is the zone that you choose now? Yeah, if they cease to use it for that, yeah. 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 So we'll need some guidance on this when you um, pass your full recommendations. If you'd like to change that, we can do that before it's notified. Oh, it, it, I mean, I, I'm the one that's kind of, you know, sort of playing devil's advocate here. Does no, 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 I agree with you. I think that it needs to be addressed. Absolutely. Well, I mean, we, we could we could just um, put up a, 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 a quick amendment here that would um, resolve that because you've got a yes. what 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 recommendation number is it? Uh, uh, can you scroll down from the top, please? Thank you. No, no, there'll be a recommendation in the big sheet. Oh, I beg your pardon. Right. So, where's Lindhurst? It's page 101. Is that, that Lindhurst? Yes. Yes. Recommendation 141. Yeah. We would add in there um, um, that you don't approve and that you do approve that this um, re uh, return to a hospital, CCC hospital yeah. zone. That, that we... Um, uh, yeah, that the that uh, the Lindhurst Hospital site on Montreal Street remains zoned as Central City Hospital Zone. Yes, agree with ministers. Yes. yes. Okay. Great. Just wonder, uh, Madam Chair, whether it's necessary to also indicate that there needs to be a rule package developed to reflect its smaller scale, mm. and that an appropriate rules package be. Um, Developed notified, developed and yeah. notified, yeah. and we will leave that in your capable hands. Thank you. Okay. Um, so there are a couple more matters that um, we didn't run with that came back from their comments. The first yep. was that they wanted um, some of the rules to be repackaged to align with the designation. Um, so the designation that's on the hospital site at the moment. Um, <laughs> They're building um, right up to the road boundaries, essentially. But we don't quite know where this car park is going to go. And effectively, what they've asked along Rickerton Ave, where we've proposed a 10-metre setback from that road, they wanted us to show in the designation that there's just a 4-metre setback. So um, the, re the reason that we've not gone for that is that, A, we don't actually know where the, the hospital... Um, where the new car park's going, but also the whole point of a designation is that they can they can do what they want without having to align to the the rules of the zone, and we'd be unhappy to see um, a ten metre uh, a four metre setback along that area. We think a ten metre is more appropriate. So, 
So, um, I mean, we haven't done that anywhere else in terms of putting our rules the same as a designation. So we're... we're um... So that one, so we talked, that's in the, the report, and then um, it's recommendation 143 on page 105. 143, 105. So I've got, um, I did actually print off some... I am getting glasses, I just, you know, <laughs> let, just, to, just saying. They so the, um, the area that's hatched in black is where the designation lies on the hospital site. So the area you can see along Rickerton Ave, that frontage there, that's, they want us to, to write that the, the setback there is four metres. Um, and the rules package at the moment talks about a 10 metre setback. The reason we've gone for 10 metres is because as a whole, the, the hospital's going to be allowed to go up to 60 metres, provided they meet some of the other built form standards, and therefore a 10 metre setback is a lot more appropriate yeah. when you've got that kind of scale of building potentially going in. <coughs> so the issue is really whether we make our rules align to, to their designation or not. Rajit, have you got anything to talk about the way designations and the rules packages need to align? or? Not that help. No. Sorry, I'm a little confused. I don't know why, but um, what what are they allowed to do at the moment? So at the moment, under the proposed rules package, we're saying a 10 metre setback along the Rickerton Avenue. Yeah, um, but what are they allowed to do at the moment? Under their designation. Yeah. They can they can do. They haven't got to tell us what they want to do. So they, they're going to build a car parking building on that Rickerton Ave frontage, but we haven't actually had any detailed drawings about where that building might sit. So the reason they put the four metres that they want, don't quite know where that's come from. They've asked for this four metre setback to ensure consistency with the existing car park designation. So are you sure that's not over on the the green hatch? Where, where's the car park building at the moment? Oh, no, it's not there at the moment. It's a new one. So, um, In addition to the one that's going to be replaced? Yeah, the, the acute services building is going up the back of there, backing onto Hagley Park, and at the front and of that designation onto Rickerton Ave is going to be a car parking building. So it's what you're saying is by allowing them to amend it to four metres across the car park, um, that could then affect the amount of setback for the actual hospital buildings and reduce it from 10 metres to four metres right along the, in the whole, that whole front of Rickerton Ave, not just the black hatched area. So that's the concern. Yeah, yeah, and, and also... Um, but they've got a chapel there, they can't... Oh, no, the, the little it. sort of brown bit is the... Yeah, but the chapel's next to it. If, you, yes, if it you're is. saying yes, that you're is. worried that it will bring the whole building for how could it possibly bring the whole building well, forward? Not in that area, obviously. Okay. Yeah. So they, they would just build around this little chapel. Oh dear, are we worrying about something we don't have to worry about, um, Phil? Well, I don't know. I just wondered if, if in fact, it's reduced to four metres. Does that, does that affect, um, say, the, foot, the footpath as well and the area which... Council would have to work for our whole roadway, including the footpath? No, not the footpath, no. It would be from the footpath back yeah. into the site. Yeah. Except if there's a huge building to, you know, straight in beside the footpath, that must have some impact. It could be um, compromising the amenity. It's around Hagley Park, isn't it? And right up to the road might not look that great to have a car park right up 
you know, four metres back from the road is quite close to the road, really. The, the, visual, the visual impact from the park side, too, and when they showed us the plans, is less than impressive. Longer the set or the larger the setback with such a very high building, not only is that an amenity issue, but also there's not that sense of oh, there's not the shadow and there's not the over dominant towering over yeah, 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 yeah. So, is that why the ten is a better along fit? the whole of Rickerton yeah. Ave? I mean, they'll only they're only seeking it on the bit that's hatched black, but um, yeah, it's whether we draw that on and it stays like that because you know, at the end of the day, they can build. They can build what they want on that designation, but our rules don't constrain them. So, that could be one that could be left open for um, mm. mediations. Um, I'm, I'm really confused because the minister's comment specifically says reduce the 10 minute metre setback to 4 metre set back from Rickerton Avenue to ensure consistency with the existing car park designation. But there isn't a car park no. designation. No, no that's there right. isn't. So Unless when they're talking about the other car park, which is not Rickerton Avenue. No, that's right. So are they planning to put a car park, another car park building on the site where the green, where the black hatch is? Yeah. But it, it's called acute services building designation. It is, that's but right. But they're putting yeah. a car park building in an acute services designation. Yep. And that's Some part okay. Of it would be a car park. Yep. The point is, we because I mean, well, we had a chat to the DHB because we had we had concerns. We had people coming here about the concerns about what the um, interface between the park and the um, and the um, and the building would be. And we met with the DHB, and they were really open to having a conversation about how to, you know, minimise the visual impact and to sort of screen it in a loving and caring sort of way, as you do with building interfacing with park um, trees and plantings and various other things and 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 step back buildings. And I mean, we had a really good conversation. I find it hard to believe that they want to do something that's going to upset the amenity on the, on the frontage. I spoke to the consent planner upstairs who's been dealing with this, and the, the latest plans she could show me, it was um, some kind of undercroft car parking and then some at grade, but that, none, of, none of that was finalised. So it wasn't an enormous no, multi-storey car parking. No, you've thing. reminded me, because yeah, the car, par car yeah. parking goes down with a lot of storage activities, and, and it's below ground level. That's right. But it, it kind of is and it isn't because of yeah. the structure of the land right, and the slightly. way the building's scaled, mm -hmm. yeah. The difficulty is that there isn't um, an agreed position yet. They haven't confirmed their out outline design, you might say. So by putting this rule in, it, it allows it to um, remain at 10 metres and potentially can be negotiated through mediations once they finalise their design. What, what is it now? Ten is metres is what we're, we're what suggesting. What is it now? In the operative plan. In the yeah. operative plan. It's um, four and a half metres. So we're extending. We're extending because we're enabling them to go up another ten metres. So that's the kind of package for the hospital zone. Wider setbacks, higher height limits. But given that that's... So you, you've just told me that there's an existing requirement on four and a half metres. But under the operative plan. Under the operative plan, but that's the first time that I've heard that because we've focused on parking, but in actual fact they're not talking about parking at all, they're talking about the building and they're asking for the retention of their existing setback. That would, yes, I think that's what they're meaning here when they, sh when they say to ensure consistency. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. But as you know, we're, we're reviewing the district plan, they're wanting to go higher, so we've increased the setback. Yes, I know, but I'd really love it that you were sitting there saying, and they've agreed, but they obviously haven't. And, you know... Uh, yeah. Well, they haven't agreed because there isn't a confirmed design plan yet. No, for but that they're side. very open to having that yeah. conversation because right. they know these are sensitive interfaces. Um, Paul? Actually, this is a, uh, because we're streaming live, I've got a question from someone who lives on Gracefield Ave. Uh, it's just come through to me. And What's they want that to... got to do with the Christchurch Hospital? It's got exactly everything to do with it, because the uh, maximum height on that site has been um, 
as to 18 metres, uh, which is six storeys, and they've done some survey on, the, on their uh, street and they will lose the sun for seven months of the year. What is the Christchurch you're talking women's. about Lyndhurst again. No, Christchurch Women, the former Christchurch Women. Oh, Christchurch Women. Oh, yeah, no, we're on Christchurch Hospital. We'll come back right. to Christchurch okay. Women. Right. Yeah. I just heard the word hospital, sorry. <laughs> and apologies for lateness. Right. So, um, I just don't know what to do with this. I mean, it just, you know, I just, I just have this awful feeling that we're ending up again in a, in a potential conflict situation, which we could avoid with a little bit. We could. Uh, might I say though that the process for before these even get to hearings is we are encouraged by the independent hearings panel to have mediations, as much mediation as we can, so that we reduce the number of issues that do actually go to. Do you know panel. how much this is costing the council? Yes, yes I do. <laughs> But potentially, it's, it's whether or not we want some certainty in there to allow it to remain open to, to debate these issues and to negotiate them through mediation, or whether you, you um, would like it to let, would like to let it go and just remain consistent with the current existing operative plan. I'd love to know what what the general view was with the um, DHB. Hmm. Well, do, are people generally happy to notify the, at the 10, 10 metres? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, it may end up back here. All right, carry on. Okay. So the final one is that they um, we have a rule where um, any buildings with a footprint over 1,000 square metres, so that's the gross ground floor area, um, they need to get a consent and the reason that we've asked that is because of the impact of, I mean, that build, that could be a 50 by 20 metre building, it's quite significant, the impact of that on the site's integration. So they've, they've asked us to delete that, that rule. Um, obviously, we're, we're a bit concerned about that. Um, the sites aren't that big in terms of, you know, the overall scale. We're not talking a Burwood size um, site, so the impact of a thousand is, is pretty large. Um, I'd like to keep that one in. Can I ask uh, about so integration you, you, in terms of the surrounding environment? Surrounding environment and also how it works on the site as well. Mm, you know. Sounds pretty fundamental to me. Yeah, I think so. It's something enough, we've already gone with in the stage two stuff, so the hospital sites outside the central city have got this rule in them. I think we'd have to keep that. Well, I'm just the only thing that I'm worried about is is that with the overarching desire to just blend this into the entire plan, is is that you know what's a requirement under the Central City Recovery Plan, which went through a completely different process than this, then becomes really the rule throughout the city, um, and it hasn't been a very good. Um, it certainly hasn't used the Independent Hearings Panel, for example, because they don't get a say over what. Um, the Central City Recovery Plan has in it. But I guess that's, that's, that's how it is. Um. Yeah, no, well, I, I, I mean, I think that, um, yeah, that, I mean, yeah, some of these hospitals, do, they do... In the in the residential areas have a major impact. Yeah. So yeah. Can we go back to yeah Christchurch Women's? The, the Christchurch Women's so they're, they're allowed to build up to a maximum of eighteen metres, uh, and um, the residents in Gracefield are, are very concerned because uh, they've done a survey of eighteen metres and how that would impact the street, and they will lose the sun uh, through that winter period for about seven months right along the street if it was built to that full height. So that's why the setbacks apply the, at the residential boundary as well as the street boundary? That's why we've yeah, increased the size of the Please setbacks. Have, have, you, have you done a survey? Do you understand yeah, how Yeah, we've had um, urban design modelling done for each of these um, hospital sites to look at those very issues. So it's been a question of balancing those things with the need to let them intensify the use of the sites and provide for more. But it, but it was before. I mean, how many stories was Christchurch Women's? Five stories? Was, 
four or five storeys or something. I suppose what it could mean though is that maybe um, maybe you they've don't got get a used to not frontage. having maybe, maybe they've, they've, they've got used to not having a high building. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, I think that unfortunately that wasn't something that came through in the minister's comments about the height provisions changing or anything. No, so we, so haven't we, we talked can't about that. We yeah. can't change that now, no. yeah. and it's existing use rights on that site, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it would be. Yeah, so they would apply for a resource consent, and that would be. I mean, they yeah. No, they're not. They last no, for twelve months. That's right. They they have a period within which, if if it's not a continuous use, yeah. then they do lapse. Mm. Yeah, but there are there have been extensions to that um, post earthquake. I believe you're right. Yes. Right. Okay. So those were the main ones. Yep. So do we need to go through these yeah. um, other ones that are in the big pages, or are they all generally quite? They were all smaller ones, just you know, wording, yep. tweaks, and things. Yeah. Okay. No, that's fine. So are people generally happy that we proceed. All right. Thank you very much. What's the next element? CCC Living Zone. Living Zone. 